Okay, I'm going to get started with a, a brief presentation of CIE, Chinese Institute of Engineers. So, um, uh, we, we hold uh, monthly seminars, technical seminars, and uh, we belong to a organization called CIE, Chinese Institute of Engineers. Uh, and as you can see, we belong to the San Francisco chapter. So there are actually six different branches across the U.S. Okay. Okay. So a uh, this is a little bit a little bit more complicated uh, chart, but if you can see across the yellow uh, horizontal bar here, these are the other organization within the U.S. We have, uh, we are the San Francisco Bay Area chapter. There's also a New York chapter, Seattle chapter, Dallas Fort Worth, New Mexico, and Southern California. Okay, so uh, CIE was founded in the year. Please have a seat in the front. Plenty of seats. What well, is more than one hundred years old? One hundred and seven. Um, we're twenty twenty four, right? So subtract 1970. Okay, um, and uh, it has several activities, key activities that the uh, Chinese Institute of Engineers USA is responsible for. One is a program with uh, Taiwan called METS, Modern Engineering Technology Symposium. Okay, there's another one with mainland China called SATEC, Sino-American Technology Exchange, okay, committee, okay. Uh, and then there's another activity called AAEOI, American or Asian American. So this one is actually includes not only Chinese, but Indian, Vietnamese, Japanese, Korean, everybody who's from Asia. So it's called Asian American event that sponsors, you know, people who's from Asia. Uh, okay, so that's basically it. So there are six or seven chapters across the U.S., and these are the main activities that that take place every year. So uh, this particular chapter, the San Francisco chapter, was founded 43 years ago. Let me see. I don't know. Maybe it's 44 years ago now. In back in 1979. Okay. So the the charter for the organization, it's a nonprofit organization, okay, serving engineers, scientists, and students for people who are in the Bay Area, okay? So this one is for people in the uh, Northern California. There's another one in Southern California. Uh, mission is to promote uh, technical advancements, networking among engineers, and so on, okay? Now, back in 2020 and 2021, you know, everybody faced the COVID uh, problem, right? So a lot of them was done actually virtual. Uh, I think back in the 2020, you know, Jensen Wan also came and became one of our speakers. I think today, if you want to invite him, his probably chances are very slim that he will come. <laughs> but, but back in the 2020, it was still possible. Okay, okay. So, uh, but we have had a lot of uh, distinguished uh, keynote speakers and so on. Okay, so as I was mentioning, starting from 2020 up to even last year, you know, because of the COVID, a lot of activities were done virtual. Okay, that means you cannot go and do in person. Okay, so it was done remotely and so on. So uh, a lot of the activities uh, we did was uh, virtual on the internet, via Zoom. So these are talks. Uh, I gave a talk on the LEO, low Earth orbit. So no, this is the link. I've been out of semiconductors for more than 10 years. Some of the activities that took place um, 
you know, virtually, okay? Uh, this is actually the banner for, we have, uh, every year we have an annual conference. So this was last year's. The theme was Beyond Breakthrough. I think this year's, uh, so this is last year, 2023, okay? This year's uh, is going to take place on, uh, uh, let me see, April, I think April 28th, right? Something like that. Anyway, so that one is uh, now that the theme for the this year's con conference is called um, Creativity and Innovation. And it's going to be focused on AI, you know, and all that just that's right now everybody's on into AI. Okay. Now here are some more pictures. Okay, uh, this one uh, is actually some of the board members. Uh, this is something from, uh, let me see. We have different organizations. Okay, so we'll, we'll cover what they are. So we think the San Francisco chapter itself. Okay, so before I get to that, tonight we're using ETRI's facility. So ETRI is one of our sponsors, okay? ETRI, Industrial Technology Research Institute from Taiwan. Uh, we have like TSMC is one of our sponsors, uh, HQ, some of the more financial area, UCSC, you know, uh, I, I used to teach many courses at UCSC after retiring. Uh, uh, Sinzu, Science Tech Park, all of these have been our sponsors. Like every year when we do the annual conference, you know, they sponsor with some funding for coffee, cookies, you know, and so on. They donate some money. Okay. Now, uh, so activities that are done by, carry out by CIE. So we have uh, also volunteers. Actually, we have two or three volunteers tonight for helping organize this uh, hybrid seminar. Tonight's seminar is in person as well as on, Z on Zoom. So there's like probably 20 folks or whatever that are on Zoom. Uh, and what we try to do is promote uh, not only technology, but also uh, work-life balance, you know, so that don't, you don't kill yourself in your job, but you also have life <laughs> besides, <laughs> besides your career, okay? Now, as I was saying, within the San Francisco chapter, there are five minor organizations. So I'm the head of Emerging Technology Group. So I'm the one that every month come here and give a talk. Okay. Uh, emerging technology means things that are really recent and just coming up. So it's not like established uh, technology, okay? But something that is new. Emerging means rising, okay? It's coming up. And then we have the traditional EECS, we have the electronic design, biomedical, and also young CIE. So this particular seminar, uh, this month seminar, we're trying to do it together with the young CIE because career is an area where uh, has special impact for the young people because they have a 30, 40 year career ahead of them. Okay, so they're going to be benefiting a lot. Okay. So uh, so that's the, the organization under the San Francisco chapter. Okay, so this one, I guess for people who want to capture the, you know, the pictures and so on, you can take a picture of that if you want the, the link to CIE for on Facebook or in WeChat or in Line or whatever. You know, I, I'm going to leave it for a minute so that people can take it. We have a website that you can log in and uh, monitor what are the activities uh, that are happening. Okay. Uh, and uh, and usually for people who are in, attending here in person, if you want, you can leave us your email so that make sure that you do get your, your email notification that there's upcoming uh, topic and so on, okay? But otherwise just visit our website and you'll know what's coming, what activities are, are happening, okay? Yes. Okay, so two things. 
uh, this is being taped. The, the, the seminar itself is being taped, recorded. Okay, so if you want to go and revisit it, you can go and get the, okay. And the, another thing that I'm doing for tonight, because there's a lot of material, that's going to be very hard for you to see every slide. If you are interested, you can ask me for a PDF copy. Okay, so you can get a copy of the slides. Okay, normally I don't do it for every technical presentation because that's like a, my own IP. This is actually my own IP too because I put together the presentation. The, it doesn't exist anywhere else. Okay, I'll tell you more about tonight's talk. Okay, but if you're interested and you, you don't write fast enough, don't worry, you can get the hard copy. <laughs> send me an email, I'll be glad to send you the hard copy. Okay, so that's a, a special for tonight. Okay, uh, normally, I, I, okay, so usually there's another one who introduces or give the presentation on the CIE and so on. So they say, here's a slide that if you want to introduce Bill. Uh, for, for some of my older fans, I've been giving talks for more than 10 years, because I've been retired for more than 10 years. And every month I usually I give a technical talk. So since I retired till now, I look at my all the list of all the presentations and seminars I've given. Is more than 100 seminars, 110 seminars. And when I say 110 seminars, it's not the same one given for seven times. Each one is a different topic. Okay. So anyway, anything under the sun, I probably have given a talk on. <laughs> Big data, you know, IoT, you know. Uh, last year I was focusing mainly on AI. So last year I gave uh, one talk on the AI, machine learning algorithms. One I gave on robots. One I gave on AI chips. Okay, and uh, and right now I already have a, a lot of material. If in fact. I want to come back to AI, and you guys are still interested in AI. I have read everything about Q learning, Q star. Q star is the latest, and Mamba. How many people who are in AI know about these two technologies? Okay, so Mamba is a technology that is the next generation after Transformers. Okay, and Q star. Everybody heard about the the tunnel, the the, the problem at the Open AI with Sam Altman leaving and so on. That was because they say, oh, they were working on Q star. Q star, okay, that one. I also have all the material ready to go. Anytime I, I'm interested in presenting, I can give a presentation. So anyway, I've been giving a talk since uh, 2009, around 2009. Uh, I taught at UCLA before, uh, electrical engineering and computer design. Uh, Senior member of our Triple E. Uh, on the on the last bullet, you can see all the talks I've given on uh, emerging technology is my already my third generation technology. I started working in semiconductors. Uh, I worked more than thirty years on semiconductors. Uh, I was working on EDA, electronic design automation. Then after that, about ten years ago, I I retire and say, okay, I'm going to go and focus focus on clean technology, clean technology or green technology. And about three to four years ago, I said, okay, that is already old. So I moved from clean technology to emerging technology. So lately, my focus has been on AI, on 5G, on the inter satellite internet link, okay, all the stuff that, uh, uh, quantum computing, all the stuff that is really beyond clean tech. Okay, so that's that's it. Let me see where I can go into a new share. Can you see where I can find another? Not great. Let me start sharing. Okay. All right. Yeah, of course. 
So, okay. Oh. Great, great. Okay. So for the 20 folks who are uh, on Zoom, do you see my presentation slides? Okay, hopefully you'll see it. So uh, let me talk a little bit about tonight's topic, okay? Um, last year, there was an article published by Forbes magazine. And the title for that article was called Most In-Demand Skills, okay? Uh, so basically that was sort of the source for tonight's talk. Okay, so tonight I'll be covering not only soft skills, the, the things like teamwork and creativity and leadership and you know all the stuff, but also I, I'll be covering also hard skills as well. So for the three major areas I'll be focusing tonight, one is AI because people will say, well, I want to go into AI. What do I need to learn? Okay, so I'll tell you about it tonight. Okay, AI is one. The other one that's hot topic is IoT, Internet of Things, okay? Yeah, IoT drives smart cities, drives everything, okay? It's from the smart cars or self-driving cars to your cell phone. All those are devices. They're called Internet of Things, okay? And the third one, we know that right now there's a saying that says, uh, data is the new oil. Before, everything was driven by oil. so. If oil is expensive, then your gasoline is expensive. Everything else. So now we say the most valuable asset right now is actually data. Okay, so people heard about big data. Okay, so data science. I also covered that. I cover AI, IoT, and data science. Okay. So this is the agenda. So I'll start by talking a little bit about jobs. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we're here, everybody has to earn a living, right? So if you want to get a job, you need to have certain skills, right? So I'll talk about the relationship between jobs and what type of skills do you need in order to be able to perform, to perform that job, okay? Now, skills are basically divided into two categories. One is the hard skills. The hard skills are the ones that you go to the college and you get a degree. Okay, those are the things that you learn. Okay, your that's your trade. Okay, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, or computer science. Okay, that's a hard skill. The other one is what we call soft skills. Soft skills is what we we also call it interpersonal skills. Like how do you get along with your coworkers? Okay, how do you work as a team? via creativity and so on, okay? So I'll be covering both soft and hard skills. The other thing that's happening right now is that since the beginning of this year, you are actually beginning to see that a lot of large companies are beginning to lay off people, okay? So it's even though right now the economy is still pretty sound and so on, a lot of the large corporations, you know, like Amazon, Walmart, and today I think I saw Cisco, they're all laying off people because they overhired during the pandemic and they have to get let some people go, okay? So, so what happens when you change jobs? Okay, your new job is not, be exact, it's not gonna be exactly like the one you had before. So you either need to reskill, that means that you have to make some changes to what you know, okay? You need to pick up some new skills, or you need to tweak your portfolio, your resume, right? Also upscaling, that means that, okay, before, if I was still working in semiconductors, maybe, you know, I don't need to know everything about chat GPT and the prompt engineering and all that just now. But right now, everybody needs to know, because in order to do anything, you are using AI. If you don't know how to do prompt engineering, you're handicapped, right? So. That also is upskill and reskill. I'll talk about that. So that belongs under the category of uh, digital know-how, digital know-how, okay? So uh, in this article that was published, they say, well, that article was published in second half of 2023. At that time, what were the most in-demand skills? 
Okay. So in my, my presentation tonight, actually, I is an upgraded version of that article because that article did not cover the hard skills. Okay, it did not cover what you need to do to do become an AI engineer or a IoT engineer or data science. That one just cover only the soft skills. Okay. So, so this is the thing. And uh, so the source is the top 10 in-demand skills. If you want, you can Google it and at home, you can go and read the original article. Okay. It's not going to be exactly the, what I'm presenting. Mine is a super version of that article. Okay. And, and then I'm going to wrap up by saying how to do it. Because the, the, every time I give a talk, you have to focus on the six items that you have to cover. What is the topic? Why are you covering? Where do you get the information? Who is doing it? And how? That's what the five W's and the one H. Right? Okay, and then wrap up with a summary and conclusion. Let me see. I'm already actually five years. Five. Okay, so this one I already talked about. Uh, right now, especially with the new technology like AI, Everything is changing bigger and faster. So if you don't move fast enough, you're going to be left behind, okay? So that's the reason why I'm giving the talk today. So you are aware of what is hot today in 2024, okay? The other thing that will be very beneficial for you who are here, the material that you hear today is not just for 2024. It's going to serve you for the next 20 years, okay? So it's not only a short-term tactical benefit, it's gonna be strategic as well, okay? So everybody, you know, everybody saw, it's sort of like a fake. If you are here and you listen to it, you, you grab everything that I said, okay? Our people may not get it, but people say, wow, why don't you send me the link? But send me the link is different than if you are present here, you can ask me questions. Especially uh, like this talk, okay? So, so it's not only from your own personal perspective that you need to keep up with the technology and skills, but companies are also retraining their employees because they say, well, before I, my job was doing, like for instance, we're doing chip design, but now you're doing chip design with uh, AI. So if you're not catch up with how to use AI tools, how are you going to do the new way? So you need a reskill, an upskill, okay? And it's, is to the benefit of the companies, not only to the individual who's looking for a job, but the companies is interested to, to make sure that their workforce, otherwise they say, well, we need to fire all the people who have now and hire new people who have the new skills. That's also the personal perspective, but also from the organization perspective that we upgrade the skills for the employees, okay? So some of the things I'll be talking about, uh, I'll be covering throughout the, the presentation, things like adaptability, communications, collaboration. Collaboration means that right now, not a single task is done that you can do it only by yourself. You have to work with other people, okay? And also the other thing is to, to be creative, okay? So anyway, we'll move on. So there's a report by the W. EF, World Economic Forum. I think they just had a meeting in Davos uh, just only about one week or, or two weeks ago. So they, they have published a uh, future of the jobs report. They say that 50% of the employees, they probably will need to be reskilled, especially right now with the changes that are happening right now. If you don't risk reskill, so 50%, half of their employees are need to be upgraded with the new know-how, okay? Uh, I'll talk about how long does it take to, to do that, to reskill, okay? It can go from anywhere from six months or less, three months, six months, or year, okay? Uh, some of the things to, that stand out is that they assume that you already went to college and you learn everything that you know about computer science and electrical engineering and so on. So people are focusing and say, that's not enough. In the workforce, you need to have be able to communicate with your peers. Okay, you need to be able to work with them. Okay, 
and how do you influence them? And so on. The other thing is that how you self-manage. That means that this is a very important thing, okay? If you are always waiting for your boss or your parents to say, go ahead and do this, go ahead and do that, you're not going to get ahead. Everything has to be self-driven. You have to be self-motivated. Not that somebody else is pushing you to do it, but you have to take your own initiative. Okay? So by training, by your employer, by yourself. That's right. Well, both. A lot of the companies, they have internal courses. They say, okay, well, we're going to promote this very good person into a management position. So we're going to train him to become, to learn how to become a manager. Okay, now he used to be only a technical guy. And now he's going to manage people. So a lot of companies, like I work for like IBM and Xerox Corporation, all the large companies, they all have internal training programs, right? You're probably aware of it. Okay, so, but that is from the company perspective. From your own perspective, you have to go and do it on your own. If you if you are lacking on some skills, you have to go and take a course from a community college or take a, a certificate from an R on your own. There are some that are provided by the employer and some of them that you have to be doing on yourself, okay? Okay, so we, we mentioned that there are, takes different amounts of time. Some that are more people skills, maybe you can, Take the course and say, oh, this is the way I need to treat people. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now you can take a course and maybe in one or two months you can learn it. Okay. There are some that are more like data related. So that means that you have to go and learn what's happening around you. Because right now we're living a data driven world. Okay. So you have to be watch for, for reality and what's in your surroundings. And there are ones that are more like AI and machine learning. Not everybody's going to learn in one week how to, how to do machine learning, okay? So uh, as a matter of fact, for the people who are really stand out, a lot of them have to take a PhD. That's three or four years of learning, okay? So it depends. But you don't need to have a PhD. I think I, I gave a talk uh, about uh, in January. So you don't have to be a AI expert in order to use AI. Okay, everybody knows how to drive a car and get here, but not everybody is a car mechanic. If the car breaks down, not everybody in the room says, okay, I can go and pull up my wrench and do it and fix it, okay? So it's different things. So every company is different No. <laughs> Uh, but but I will hold all the questions till the last. So if you have a question, write it down. Ask me at the end because otherwise I'm not going to be able to go through all the material. And is it more important for you to catch the whole thing and not worry about the nitty gritty about specific things? Okay. But you can re ask me the question at the end. Okay. If I if I not have so, uh, answer it. So trending wise, there's a growing trend. That means these are the jobs that are now becoming hot. That means they are growing, okay? What? You look at it, data analysts. So that's why I say today I'm going to be covering data science, okay? There's probably somewhere like uh, AI, okay? The second one is AI. It doesn't matter what the order, it's not prioritized, okay? But just say AI, data analysis, big data, okay? Business. Uh, related stuff, uh, blockchain, and so on, okay? Uh, software, IoT, Internet of Things, okay? These are the things that are trending up, okay? That means they're becoming hot and becoming important. Likewise, the reverse side is the, where things are going down. Who are the people who are going to, who are going to be losing your, their jobs? Bank clerks and so on, okay? Because those people can be replaced by a machine or by a robot, okay? So accountants, you know, script writers who, who used to fight, was there like a strike, yeah. right? A strike in Southern California because they say, well, all the people who used to write all the scripts for the TV series and shows, they say, well, ChatGPT can do it in two minutes. Why do they need the... Uh, 
a person to do it for two weeks and then maybe not even match with the, with the speed of a, right now it's generative AI. You can give it, say, create me a script for this and I want the characters to be called this and this, or you can ask the thing to create it for you. And, and the thing can do it in a couple of minutes. You put in the prompt and it comes about. Okay. Okay, so these are the ones that, by the way, don't worry too much about reading every single thing. As I said, if you are interested, I'll be glad to send you a copy so you can digest it at your own leisure <laughs> at home, okay? Okay, so first of all, let me just say that the skills are divided into two. One is the hard skills. Hard skills are the specialized knowledge that you go to school, you pay your tuition, you go, you go for four years and you get your degree in computer science, in electrical engineering, okay? Or in uh, creative writing, or whatever, okay? And then there are the soft skills. So soft skills, they very seldom teach in, in, in colleges. You have to learn it. You have to either learn it by personal experience, by working with, within the company, or you have to take a, a soft skills course. Now, there are a lot of soft skills course. Okay, so just to mention a few. So I'm going to show two slides just to show you some input. So some of the hard skills that are hot, look at it, 2024. Okay, hard skills, AI is there, cloud computing, blockchain, okay, UX is user experience design, data science is there, digital marketing, and so on, okay. On the soft skill side, there's creative thinking, collaboration, persuasion. Right now, that is something that just recently surfaced. Within the workforce, can you persuade your co-works to do something. Are you good at convincing people, <laughs> okay? So it's not say, well, my boss told me to do this and just do that, okay? But sometimes you have to, especially when you're working in teams, you cannot do it all yourself, okay? But who are going to listen to you? You're not their boss. You don't write them the, the paycheck. It's the manager. So how do you get your co-workers to help you? to work with you requires persuasion, okay? Time management, adaptability is also very important, is flexibility. Okay, so this is one slide, just to give you one company's take of that. This is another one, okay? You're going to see that some of them you're going to overlap because hopefully not every publication comes out with completely different set of skills. You have to have uniformity in some of them, okay? So if you look at it on the hard skills, you're always going to see AI there. You're always going to be IoT there, okay? You're going to always hear data science there. And on the soft skills, it's always you're going to see creativity, collaboration, adaptability, EQ, and so on, okay? So this is two different slides from two different sources. But hopefully you, you can see the congruence of, the, of them, okay? So, because uh, most of the people, especially in Silicon Valley, they are right now mostly IT centric. I would say mostly IT centric. You are either in hardware or in uh, computer science. Uh, you are in chips, semiconductors, okay, uh, so on, okay? So I'm going to focus on three areas because this one, the hard skills, uh, the, the specific domain knowledge for each job is different. So if you're going to biomed, the things that you need to learn is going to be different than if you go into finance, right? Because some of them you are require medical knowledge, some of them require financial knowledge, some of them require engineering knowledge. So uh, just specifically for the engineers, most of the engineers in Silicon Valley, which are IT centric, <laughs> we have an IT expert here in the back, Daniel, is that he does that all the IT support for us. Okay, so I'm going to focus on AI, IoT, and data science. Okay, if I give it, we're giving a talk to the people who are in the hospital, I'll be going to probably talk about bioengineering, okay, and nano nanotechnology and, and microsurgery, okay, it's different things. So I'm not just addressing for the current audience here. 
Okay, so three areas. This one is a, a general, hard skills in general. What are the top 10 hard skills? That means technical skills, okay? If you look at it, AI, machine learning, data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, RPA is uh, just automation in general, just make things work faster and so on, okay? AR, VR, and IoT. This is in general. For AI. Now, let's dive into AI now. If you're into AI, you say, well, what do I need to know? If you want to get a job related to AI, okay? Technical skills for AI. Okay, you have to know some programming language. Okay, so I've listed some of them. I probably, there's probably too many languages to list all of them, but Python, Java, C++, okay, Liz, Hadoop, and so on, probably some database, really, software. Okay, so some solid knowledge of mathematical algorithms, uh, computing, uh, Unix tools, signal processing, okay? Uh, a lot of things are related to, for instance, ANN, artificial neural networks. Actually, they are related to signal processing, okay? So the last one is called artificial neural nets, okay? The best seats are in the front. <laughs> they are reserved for you, okay? Okay, so let, let's still continue with the AI. What are some of the AI jobs right now out there? People still people say AI, AI. Well, what are the jobs I can get in the AI field? So on this right column, you have the AI jobs. Okay, so if you go and look for a uh, learning engineer, robotic scientist, okay, data scientist, research scientist, business developer, okay. And then on this column, you have the skills that you need in order to do the jobs that are on the right column, okay? So you need to have some programming language experience, hands-on knowledge of linear algebra statistics. Actually, I'll tell you a personal anecdote. When I was doing my PhD way back when I was 30, 40 years ago, probably more, even more than that, uh, I took all the math courses, not only all the electrical engineering courses, but all the mathematical courses. And I, I, I during my career, I never used any of the math. I never used even calculus, things that you learn even in high school today. I never used, you know, integration by parts. Remember that? <laughs> I, I, right, I never used any of that stuff. Because every time you, you need to do that, you have a software to say, okay, put in the parameters and how, how it comes. When have you done really that simple? Never. But the funny part is that right now with the AI suddenly coming up with machine learning, all the courses that I took while I was in grad school, real analysis, complex variables, matrix algebra, all of that suddenly they are needed for, in order to do the, the ANN, the artificial neural networks. They all matrix manipulation. So I said, finally, I actually made use of everything that I learned 40 years ago. Okay. So again, I'm not going to go over bullet by bullet, but if you ask, I'll give you the slides. So you can go and study. On the left side, there are the roles, the AI roles, the job roles. Okay. They are scientists, machine learning engineer, and all that stuff. AI consultant, the only thing they have, they don't have the, the speaker. <laughs> and then and then the tools, what are the programming tools that you need? What are the other skills that you need? Okay, so all of this is mapped for AI. Okay, so let me quickly now dive into a second area called, called IoT, the internet of things. Okay, right now you know that we are dealing also with, we have moved from the, the era of cloud computing. 10 years ago, everybody said cloud computing. Everything is cloud. Right now, what do you hear now today? Edge. Edge computing, not cloud computing. So edge means 
where things are happening. So if you are driving a, a car, it's where you are inside the car. You're not sending the information to the cloud and waiting for a response from the cloud to tell you, okay, you need to break. Because by that time you already ran over the people who are walking. So edge computing now is the thing, okay? So that is a device. A device is your cell phone is a device. Your car is also a device. Your refrigerator is a device. Your toaster is a device. All the sensors are the all devices. That's called edge. So you need the computing power right where the things are happening because you cannot afford a long latency. That means that latency is the time that you send the signal or the request and by the time you get the, the reply back, that's called latency. So right now the latency requirements are like microseconds or nanoseconds. You want to know some information, you need it right away in the next second. You cannot wait for 30 minutes to get a response. Okay, so that's called latency. So anyway, I'm going to skip some of the stuff because I was I never get over all the material. Uh, but here are some of the things. So this is the second area of IT, IoT engineer. Okay, so you, you are working on devices. Devices are, as I meant, from cell phones to cars, to refrigerators, to TVs, to whatever, okay? And you need to have skills. You have to need to know how to work with the device. So if you're working on a cell phone, you need to, or if you don't know how to fix a cell phone, we'll take it to some place who can fix your cell phone, right? But somebody needs to know it, okay? And the background is computer science, computer engineering, and so on, okay? Also, this requires domain knowledge to the device. So you're, if you're fixing a refrigerator, not because you are an IoT engineer, you can fix your refrigerator. It's specific to that particular device. If you are fix a car, you have to know how to fix the car. But we, we are not, I say, we can fix anything. At least I'm not to the point where I'm a handy person that can fix anything. There are certain things I have to still ask somebody else to do. So IoT engineer, but that's a, a hot field, right? Now. Because everything is on the edge. So you're dealing with the device, okay? The third area is called data, data science. As I mentioned before, there's a saying that says, data is the new oil. Everything that we are touching and experience is driven by data. If you don't have the data, you cannot do anything. So data is the new oil. Without the oil, you cannot drive the car. Well, without data, you cannot do anything. So right now, why AI is suddenly picking up so fast is because the availability of data. Because you, everybody is taking the cell phone and taking a picture here, taking a picture of data. All the, the picture you are taking is data. So before, there was not availability, that, that, that wide availability. So data science is actually very broad. Computer science, you know, data management, data analytics. So you start by, think about the, all the phases that are required for data. First, you have to gather the data. You go and take, go and look up for something, okay? That's called data search, data mining, okay? Then after you get it, you have to analyze the data. That's called data analytics, okay? And then you can do, based on the data that you have, you can predict what's going to happen, okay? Predictive analytics. And not only that, but you have to be able to present the data, okay? Because if you have data and then you cannot make sense of it because you, you don't ask. If you're looking at just a, a million data points, what do you make out of it? You have to have a concise way to show it in a picture form or in a textual form. What do you have? Okay, that's data presentation. Okay, so anyway, each of the topics I'm talking about here is worth another hours of presentation. So I'm just touching the surface, okay? Okay, so but some of them, for instance, what I want to highlight in this slide is the following. There are three different columns here. One is the technical know-how, one is the skills, the analytical skills, and then the business skills. Right now, what I'm saying is that when you go and say, oh, Bill said that you have to know and take this course on, on matrix algebra and all that stuff, 
that's not enough because that's only your technical skills. In order for you to become successful, you have to not only know the technical stuff, but you also need to know the business aspect of why you need that information. So technical, business, and personal, three domains. If you're missing one, you're not going to be good enough. You have to worry about all the facets, okay, to be successful. So here, I'm just highlighting some of under each column, you know, under technical, like coding and big data and so on. Okay, under analytics, that I circle here, it's called problem solving. Whatever we're doing at work, you're solving a problem, right? Where it's developing a new product or whatever. The other one is that you need to have business sense. Why are you doing it? For the company to make money or for you to get promoted? What's your business? As I said, a lot of the slides, you can get it and you can microscope it, okay, at home. Okay, soft skills. Soft skills are the ones that you don't learn, you, you don't very seldom, they don't teach in universities. There are a lot of soft skills that are being taught in institutes, like how to do, how to be a good leader, how to do more creativity, how to work in teams, and all that stuff. There are a lot of courses, but they're not under the like the traditional four-year curriculum. Okay. So first, the the high level view. Top ten soft skills. Communication. That's one of the things that always at the top. If you have a lot of knowledge in your tummy, but you can only communicate 30% of what you know, you're only as good as that. Another person may know less than you, but he can communicate 60% of what he knows. He gets ahead of you because he can let other people know what he knows. Otherwise, everything is just inside our tummy. Nobody knows. So communication is the outlet. So you have to learn how to become a good speaker, how to be a good writer. Otherwise, other people won't know. You are good. You are knowledgeable. But other people don't know. <laughs> okay? Okay. Self-motivation. I said, well, if you are waiting for somebody to tell you do this and do that, it's not good. You have to motivate yourself. Okay? Leadership, responsibility, okay, problem solving, as I mentioned. Flexibility, okay. Flexibility is, I don't know what, what the other thing is coming up here. But that's a matter. Uh, time management is very important. Everyone has only 24 hours. There's only 24 hours in a day. So if you're doing something, you cannot do an hour thing. So you have to prioritize what's important, okay. Okay, so it doesn't matter the percentage, you can read it on your own. These are the most important, the most in demand soft skills. Communication is always number one because that's letting other people know what you know. <laughs> okay, otherwise only you know what you know. Okay. Communication, organization, teamwork, always be punctual. That shows respect to other people. If you are five minutes late, 10 minutes late, People say, well, I was going to wait for, to ask him a question, but he's not up here yet, okay? Critical thinking, creativity, adaptability. That's one of the pervasive themes for tonight. They say the only thing that is permanent. So if you cannot adapt to change, you're not gonna succeed. Okay, so that's adaptability. Okay, so let me take a pause here. I think what timing is good. And come back to the source, why I'm giving the talk today about this one. There was an article that was written by Forbes magazine. And the, type, the, the title of the talk was called Top 10 Most In-Demand Skills for 20, well, when the article came out it was in 2023, okay. But right now we're already in 24, so I upgraded. 
And the material, everything that I presented up to this point is not in this article, <laughs> okay? It's all, I compile all the material. So this is the material that is actually in the article. So if you want, you can read the article from Forbes magazine, okay? But up to this minute, everything that I told you was not in the article. So that's why I say my presentation is a superset of that article. So if you just read the article, you don't know anything that about, I said, well, what's important in data science, what's important in IoT, what's important in AI, what's the difference between hard and soft skills. Okay, all that stuff is not in here. This is where the article starts. Okay, so they say the top 10, and most of these are soft skills, okay? You can imagine Forbes magazine, they, they're not addressing only to IT people or to the and EECS people, right? They're addressing to a general population. So these are the 10 items from Forbes. Okay, so I want to give credit where they, they are the one that came out with these 10, they're not built up, okay? Okay, so digital literacy. That means knowing what's happening in the digital world. Like if you know how to do internet, can you do interact with uh, ChatGPT? Okay, all of that's a digital literacy. If you don't know how to do that, you cannot go ahead because you are already handicapped because you don't know the latest tools. Okay, so digital literacy. That one is a data literacy. As I mentioned, everything is dependent on data. Data is real time. It's, it's not like, Pre already pre prepared. Okay. When you go and drive in the car and somebody is walking in front of you, it's at that time. It's not like it was already green or it was already red. Okay. So that's the importance of data. Data is real time. Okay. So data literacy, critical thinking. Critical thinking means be able to distinguish the real data from the fake data, okay? You have to have your smarts. So right now, if you look at the news, half of it, you, you believe it, half of it, you don't believe it. But who makes that criteria? You decide, okay, this must be fake because I don't believe in your business, right? So that means that you have to have critical thinking to make that judgment. That's what is called critical thinking, is to be able to distinguish the truth from the falsehood. Okay, everybody knows about EQ and as important as IQ, creativity, collaboration, flexibility, leadership skills, okay, time management, curiosity and continuous learning. So I'm going to go over each of these 10, okay? Digital literacy is basically all the skills that we're dealing in the modern world. All the new technology that comes up, whether you like it or not, you have to learn what ChatGPT gives you. Because otherwise you, you don't, you're the only one that not, don't know how to use ChatGPT. And everybody can go and access the thing and you don't know how to use it. Okay? So these are the new digital tools and they are new technologies. You know, I'm, I, you know, all the old timers like me, you know, we actually have a lot of challenging times to learn new tools because we say, well, we're already retired. Why, why are we learning all this other stuff? But, but the thing, the world around us is moving. So even though we're not going to the office, I still know how to learn how to use ChatGPT or DALI, okay? Yes. It's the name of the tool. It's from OpenAI. Yeah, so you can write it down. Yeah, the, the company is called OpenAI and the tool is called ChatGPT. Capital G, capital P, capital T. Okay, data literacy. As I mentioned, everything is depending on data. Okay, so so why are we worried about? Because people will say, well, I have a lot of personal data. My social security number. Okay, my bank account number. You don't want other people to know your private 
data, right? So data, you have to go safeguard it. And then if you have data, you have to be able to analyze the data, right? Okay, so data is very important. So that means that you have to, literacy means that you have to learn. Just like when we started elementary school, okay, we didn't know anything, okay? So, okay, well, you have to go to school to learn things, right? So we start learning how to read, we start learning how to do math, okay? Right now, we have to go and learn about the latest digital tools, the latest technology that's around us. As long as we are living, we have to move up with the society. So as things move, you have to move. Otherwise, you're just falling behind. Okay, so uh, this is something that I already mentioned a little bit about data. Okay. okay. One of them is data collection. So in, where do you get the data? You have to collect it. Nobody's going to give it to you, okay, here's a big dump of all the data. So if it's not relevant to you, why do you need that data? You don't need it. When I give my presentation on big data, big data doesn't mean it's a good thing. As a matter of fact, big data is a bad thing because too much data and you don't know what to make out of it, it's useless. What you need is not big data, but good, small quantity, useful data. So you have to massage from the big data into something that is really useful. Okay, so data collection, data management, data analysis, data presentation, and also data ethics. So some of them you, you have to do it yourself because sometimes the data is just the fact. It doesn't say it's good or bad. So in that case, you need your critical thinking to tell what is good and what's bad, what is useful and what's not useful. That is complemented by the other skills. Okay, so critical thinking is that we live in a world where every day you read the news and you say, well, I, should I believe it or you don't believe it? And I'm pretty sure that when we think, or when you think, we, we don't necessarily think the same way because our background is different. Okay, so what you think is, is correct or is truthful, you think about it. What I read, okay, based on my own background and my own history, I say, okay, this is believable. Okay, so, so it's based on evidence, evidence, okay? But how do you make the right decision? The more knowledgeable you are, the better you are in making the correct decision. Okay, like you, you, you spent one hour here listening to Bill Gow talk, okay? Hopefully when you leave this room, you will know a little bit more than when you walk in. So information is useful because the more you know, it will help you in the future make the right decision, okay? So critical thinking is the ability also to, sometimes you have to question things. When you read a thing, say, well, I don't believe this is true, okay? And, and then you apply your common sense. You apply your knowledge, your skills, okay? And you make the call. So let me give you an example. Before we start giving the talk, somebody we were talking about stocks, okay? So a person who is knowledgeable in stock trading versus a person who never get into the stock market, they're going to make different decisions, right? Because if you track the stock market every day or every morning, you're going to make a more wiser decision than somebody who is not investing and he doesn't know what's the ETF, okay? Right? So it's all information. Okay, EQ, okay? Emotional intelligence. So there was a thing where at the beginning there was an IQ. People is how intelligent you are. Okay, then people realized, well, well, intelligence is not enough because if you don't have other human emotions or values, people may not agree with you. Or if, if let's say you have a difference in opinion with another person, but
But if you don't respect the other person, you say, well, no, you are wrong, you are wrong, okay? That's not having EQ, okay? You may be smart, but you, the way you deal with other people who have a difference in opinion with you, you still have to treat the person with respect. You say, okay, well, maybe we don't agree, but I, I can see maybe your perspective, okay? So that's EQ. And you cannot have one without the other. You have to be intelligent and you also have to be able to empathize with other people, okay? So, and this thing here, it keeps growing. It never stops. IQ never stops because there's more knowledge and more information every day. And EQ never, never stops because you're growing every day. So when you walk out of the room, this room tonight, you're different than when you walk in. When I teach Chinese philosophy, there's a saying that if you see a small creek with the water coming through, the first time you step into the creek and you come out from the creek, and the second time you get in, it's already different because the water is different. The water that when you first make this, the first uh, step is different than the water that came afterwards. Okay. Oh, creativity, okay. Basically, people say, hey, think out of the box. Don't just re regurgitate or keep repeating the things that you already learned in school. Think out of the box. Think in a way that is different than what you learn. You learn some way and you extrapolate based on your own knowledge. You put in your own input and you create something new. The reason why right now generated AI is so hot is because AI finally can create things. It's not just, okay, Wikipedia, tell me this. And then, well, the Wikipedia already has a database. So it just tells you back what other people put in. Generative AI means that it can create things that did not exist before. Okay. You want an example of generative AI? Okay. So let's say, Nobody has drawn up to, I don't know where people have drawn, but before I never seen a picture, say, of a cat walking on the moon. People say, well, that doesn't exist. There's no cats on the moon. How are you going to, why are you drawing a cat on the moon? Okay. But now, if you give the image generators, like DALI 2 or whatever, there's so many of them that say, draw me a picture of a walking of a cat walking in a spacesuit on the moon. He can create a picture that he never before, never existed. Okay? Or right now, for instance, I like Superman, Batman. Let's say, instead of having the comic artist draw the picture, say, why don't you give me a picture of Salvador Dali drawing Batman? That did not exist before because Sarodo Dali never knew who Batman is. But now you can ask the tool and you can create a picture of Batman with the characteristics of a Salvador Dali painting. Okay, anyway, getting sidetracked. I want to keep track of money. Okay, collaboration. As I mentioned, most of the tasks right now you cannot be performed by only a single individual. So you need to be able to work with other people. Okay, so all the things that are on the bottom of the page, it says you have to give other people support and you also get support from other people. Teamwork, communication, trust. If you divide a job and somebody else is doing the other part, but you don't trust that, then the, thing cannot, the team cannot work well. Or if other people don't trust your work, so, well, this guy, you know, they, they, he never produces anything good. You know, everything is sort of half, half cooked. Okay. So you have to have, in order to have mutual respect, you have to also have to trust. Okay. And trust is proven by action. Okay. So anyway, uh, I'm going to quickly just skip some of this workplace collaboration. That basically is working with other people. Okay. Flexibility and adaptability. As I mentioned, right now, this is one of the key skills because everything is changing in such a large magnitude and it's changing so fast 
that if you don't adapt and you are not open-minded to be flexible, you're going to be buried in the past. Okay? So adaptability is important. Flexibility is important. With more information, you can change your mind. So let's say if you, before you came to this seminar, you never, you didn't know anything about, I don't know, data science. Well, you may have a certain opinion about what data science is, but when you walk out today, it's, oh, now I have a little better understanding of what that is. Okay. Then you have to adjust with the new knowledge that you just acquired. Okay. Leadership skills. One thing I want to talk about leadership is that people, some people have the miss the wrong concept of what leadership is. People say, well, only the people who are the CEO or the VP, okay, they are our leaders. So what they do is important. No, leadership is up to the last employee. Even the people who are working on a manufacturing line, he can come up with a new idea. So leadership is not limited to only the executives and the people who are on top. Each of us can contribute and become a leader. Okay. So here, you know, the, the, you know, as I said, each of these talks, I can give a one-hour presentation just on leadership. Okay, but but tonight you're going to get just the, the broader picture. Okay, the whole enchilada, but you're not going to get all the need the all the onions, <laughs> all the carrots in there. Okay, but leadership, all of that thing. They are listed, they're related to leadership skills. So I don't have time to go under each bullet, but when, if you request the slides and you read it, you can dive into it. Time management. We all have only limited time. There's only 24 hours in a day. So if you're spending one hour listening to Bill Gow give this talk, okay, you are, you are missing maybe a game on TV or you're missing a, another thing, right? There's always a trade-off, but what is worthwhile is you make the call, okay? So people call me and say, Bill, you know that for this seminar, there are not as many people who sign up as your AI talks. I say, it doesn't matter. For the people who are interested, hopefully everybody who is here, you are benefiting from tonight's talk. And the people who say, well, maybe I, you know, I'm already working, and I don't need to change a job. So they say, well, I'm not going to spend my own hour. So I'd rather watching a, a, a football game. You know, they, it's their own. So this, it's no fault. You know, it's just everybody makes their own decision. Okay, so tips for time management is that, you know, sometimes you have to track it. You have to prioritize it. What is important to you? I could spend this hour doing this versus that. What I'm what I'm going to get the most of it. If I do this, or go to watch a movie. Your call, okay? Okay, curiosity can continuous learning. Okay, this is also very important. You know that in order for you to learn new things, the first thing you have to do is that you have to be curious. Things that you don't know, the things that drives you to learn it is your curiosity. Say, oh, I don't know about it. As a matter of fact, all the talks that I've given over the past 10 years is because I said, oh, I don't know about this subject. So I'm going to talk about NVIDIA's H100 and A100. I never worked on NVIDIA. I don't know about what their server does or what their hardware does. But I have a curiosity. So I want to learn why is this, uh, the stock for NVIDIA is so high? Why, why are they the thing? Okay, so that's a curiosity, okay? Bill Gauss curiosity, I say, okay, I'm going to learn about NVIDIA's products. And in the last, I don't know, months or two months, I gave a talk on AI chips, where I talk about NVIDIA, I talk about Intel, I talk about open, open AI chips and so on. So curiosity is the, your driver. If you're curious, then that will drive you to inquire, okay? And the thing about learning, I think most of people attending today are Chinese. 
you you learn it and you never stop. It's not say, okay, well, I already went to Bill's uh, seminar, so I know everything about soft skills. Okay, tomorrow you may run into a different article and you learn a new thing. So as long as you are alive, I, as long as you're curious, there's not enough things that for you not to learn. There's always something new. Okay, so, so in the workforce, we're talking about the workforce. How do you do it in the workforce? Well, like for instance, tonight you are sitting here listening to Bill giving a, a talk. It's a sort of seminar or webinar. Okay, or you can go to a conference and learn something about it. Or you can sign up for a course from Stanford and say, okay, I want to learn about this thing. The thing is to do it. It doesn't matter where you're going to get it, okay? So, like for instance, even myself, from the speaker standpoint, I'm this one here on the bottom. It's like preparing and delivering a presentation. For me, to give this presentation to you, I'm learning. Because in order for, for me to give the presentation, I have to gather all the material. I have to digest it. And then I have to present it. So that's the way I learn. And the, all the 100 seminars that I've given over the, the past 10 years is because I said, I want to pick a subject that I don't know enough. For instance, the, when I talk about the satellite communications, I didn't know about the internet, the, the uh, Elon Musk, the, you know, internet company. Okay. So I said, okay, I'm going to learn about it. How do they do satellite in space? How the satellite communication communicates down to earth? All that stuff. So that's the way I learn. I don't give a talk just on the thing. People say, uh, people, the, the traditional way, when I first uh, retired, University of California says, well, you are an expert in, in EDA. You are an expert in place and route. Why don't you open a course on place and route? I said, no, I'm not interested because I already know everything about there is to know about EDA and there's everything I know about place and route. I want to give a talk on something that I myself don't know. So that's the way all the seminars that I've given in the past is because my own curiosity and interest in learning something new. Okay, so we're in good time, eight o'clock. I'll try to wrap up by 8.10. Okay, so we'll all get out of here by 8.30 as the brochure says. So I've given you all the information. But information without action is not good. So if, when you say what, why, where, who, when, there's one that is not start with a W. It's a how. How do you do it? Okay. That's important. So I'm going to, in the next few slides, just briefly talk about, well, I, I talk about all the knowledge. I was like, well, how do you? So I'm going to talk about that. So number one, you have to be open-minded. You know what you know today, but there are many things that you don't know. So number one, I made to yourself to say, there are a lot of things that I don't know, okay? And I still can learn. So be open-minded, okay? Be curious, okay? And not only that, but the way you communicate, I, I keep telling communication is important. It's not just how you orally communicate, but sometimes when you're dealing with people, your body language also tells the other person where you are sincere <laughs> or you're just trying to, you know, sort of like giving him the, the run around, right? So you have to show So body language is also in your stuff and how you deal with the person, okay? Always thinking about growing. If you don't grow, each of us, since we were a baby until now, tomorrow I still grow. My hair tomorrow will be a little bit different than my hair today, okay? But we're all still growing, okay? Always try to improve your communication skills. Before, when I was an engineer, I used to be just an R&D engineer. I was sitting in front of the computer, 
running programs, you know, doing programming and all that stuff. Then one day I was invited to become a lecturer and visiting faculty at UCLA because the, the EEC, E department has said, I'm too busy and I cannot teach the course. Can you come and teach it for me? Because he knew that I was in the same domain that he was. And that's where my career changed because instead of just facing the computer all the time, I suddenly I start giving a lecture in front of a big lecture hall. And I had to project my voice to the last row. Mm -hmm. So that's why today my voice is so loud. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I had to project my voice so that everybody in the last row could hear me. Okay, but that opened me up because then that's when I started talking to people and teaching the thing. thing. So in all my career, I was actually never a officially a college professor, although today they always say, oh, college also, college also. Okay. But in my career, actually, I was not a official professor. I, I, I did teach at UCLA, I did teach at Illinois and so on, but only because I was like a lecturer and or invited professor, guest, guest professor. But you know the reason why I teach and after I, I, I retire, I teach? Because when I was in UCLA, they had a survey for all the people, all the students who take a course. At the end of the semester, they will write, uh, invite the students to submit a survey. What do you think about your instructor? I was never officially on the faculty because I was a, a guest professor. But I was always ranked number one in terms of communication, be able to be able to pass the knowledge of the course to a student. They say, so people at the end, they say, you know, Bill, when you retire one day, you don't need to worry about the money. Still go back and teach because you are one of the rarest people. When I te listen to you give a lecture, I understand it. So that was actually the best compliment I heard. I say, oh, when I give a talk, people actually can understand it. And I say, well, okay, one day if I don't need the money, but I still have the know-how, I'll teach it for free. So that's why you're listening to me today. Okay. Yeah. So that's why my motivation today is just to pass on some of my knowledge to you. Yeah. So how you do it? We talk about all the skills. We have a list of talk of skills or hard skills, soft skills, and so. So, to in order to do anything, number one is that you have to measure where you are at now. Okay. What do you know now? What you don't know now? What do you need now? Okay? And you say, okay, I already know this. I need know how to program in Java or in whatever. Okay, Python. Okay, you don't need to. But, but I don't know, for instance, uh, one year ago, I said, well, I don't know what ChatGPT Ch Ch is. Well, okay, learn about ChatGPT. Ch so these are the there are buckets. Things that you know, things that you don't know, things that you need to know. Okay? Huh? Too easy. I'll teach you how to do ChatGPT, but I'll give you the generic answer, okay? The first thing you from this slide, what you need to know is that you need to have three buckets. What you know already. Okay, well, if you're retired, say, well, it doesn't matter where I know that I don't know because I'm retired. Okay, the thing is that if you're still working, you say, well, in my current job, how do I get ahead? Okay, if you are, say, a good individual contributor, but one day you want to become a manager, then you have to learn how to manage people, how to interact with people, right? So that's what you need. And if you already know, okay, this, I'm already good, pretty solid. I don't need to worry about. This area, I admit I'm not that good dealing with people. That means that's a need. And then you say, okay, what's your deficiency? You go and work on your deficiency. It's as simple as that. So I mentioned, identify skills that you need. What do you possess? What do you already know? Okay. And the ones that you are not good enough, then you build it. Improve it, upgrade it, reskill it. Okay. 
And right now, you know, when you say, well, how do I learn about ChatGPT? You know how many courses there are on the YouTube about how to use ChatGPT? Probably 50, 100, you know, I don't want to call 1,000, but but there are so many. Just, 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 just go to YouTube and say, how to learn ChatGPT. And you're going to have 20, 30. Now, one, one problem that I'm going to tell you what you will face, and that is the big data problem. When you type in how to learn or how to learn ChatGPT, you're going to get 50 different presentations. There are some that are really good, some that are really bad. So that's the problem with big data. That means everything is on the net. But you need your critical thinking say, okay, this is good for me because I'm at this level. This MIT professor's version, maybe it's too advanced for me, okay? But I can learn from another guy who is person just to use, how to use ChatGPT. So you have to know where to go in, okay? At the level that you are at, you know, if I know, if I'm very knowledgeable, I'm not going to listen to a, a uh, elementary school teacher say how, how to use ChatGPT. When I, I used to teach Sun Tzu Binfa. Sun Tzu Binfa, I've, when I learned that talk and I said, I'm going to give a course on Sun Tzu Binfa. Mm -hmm. I learned from the people, the professor who is teaching the Guofang, Beijing Guofang Da Xue, Jiang Sun Tzu Binfa, the Jiao Shou, Wei Ting Guo. I also learned from the guy who is just elementary school teacher, so what's, who is Sun Tzu, okay? So you have a different levels. So you have to go in at the right level that you are. And if you go in and say, well, I need more information, then you dive in deeper. You say, well, I don't understand it. You go up a level, get into something that's more understandable for you. So anyway, that's that's uh, all that stuff. Talk to me after the thing. Oh, I'm happy that, actually I'm very on time. This is the last slide, summary and conclusion. So in this seminar, we discussed the importance, well, the thing between jobs and skills. And because everything is changing, nobody should be happy with what you know today because there's also something new for you to learn tomorrow. Okay, so you need new skills, reskills, or upskills. We talk about, we're living in 2024. So I gave you the 2024 version of what's, hot, what's the most in demand today. And the good news is that most of these skills, they don't change year for year by year. It's not like say, okay, well, I have a Camry, 2023. Okay, 2024 is going to be a new one. Most of these, they will survive for many years. So whatever you learn today's lecture, it's not, it's not going to be like they're going out of, out of fashion by next year. They'll still be there, okay? So it's a good investment for you to learn. It's not just something that passes with a year. So, well, by next year, I'm already no longer need critical thinking or I no longer need to be digital knowledgeable, okay? Everything that here is time well invested because it's not just a 2024 learning. It's good for you for the next three years, five years, maybe for your whole career, 20 years. Okay, so we also did talk at the end how to do it, okay? So this talk, it says, get started. This is the way you get started and never stop. Because once you start learning, you know, th there's one thing when I teach the course, I say, you don't need to just learn what is in the material. The best way, there, there's also a saying in Chinese, I say, when you give it somebody, don't just give him the fish. Give him the fish to catch fish, the, the pole to catch the fish. So when you're not just learning what I'm presenting tonight, but if you learn how to learn, that's the key. Say, oh, next year, maybe something will change, but I already know how to pursue it because I learned from Bill how to learn, not just what was hot in 2024. Okay. so. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I don't know where, I'm still debating because depending where, uh, what's the uh, audience, 
but I have already material ready for the next talk. If I'm going to give a talk, I'll come back to technical stuff. And this, this may be my next talk, transformative technologies. Now, what I want to emphasize as here, in this next talk, I'm not going to talk too much about AI because AI has been saturated. You know, you, you open up here and say, AI, and that is AI. So what I'm going to talk in this talk is called non-AI. Okay. It's also like for people who in computer science, like AI bar, okay? You already get, getting swamped with AI. Everything is AI, okay? So I'm going to talk about other technologies. If you're interested in other technology, there are other technologies besides AI. So here I'm listening, listing like ambient AI, IoT, adaptive drones and robots, digital humans, okay, satellite communications, programmable photonics, okay, new processor technology, that means all the hardware for computing, next generation networking and so on. Okay, so that's it. Uh, uh, that's the end of my talk. Uh, I'm going to open up for questions. Uh, Mong, I don't know where they're, I'll, I'll entertain the, the audience here. If there are some people who submit uh, the Zoom uh, questions, you can fire them up to me or I can look at it, okay? Okay, so first of all, in this room, any questions or comments? <laughs> Let me share with you a little bit of personal experience. My own background is electrical engineering. Okay, I got a PhD in electrical engineering, learning how to do chip design, you know, all the stuff, and then learn how to do programming. So I went to EDA. When I retired, so I worked for 30 plus years in semiconductors. When I retired, I said, only thing I know, the only thing I know is electrical engineering and chip design. When I retire, I say, oh, besides engineering, there's so much engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, optical engineering, okay, aeronautical engineering, satellite engineering, all the stuff I didn't know, because the only thing I knew was chip. Okay, but guess what? When you talk about engineering, the core of engineering is mathematics and physics. Okay, do you know that when we learn double E and we solve all the Laplace and the Maxwell and all that stuff. Second order partial differential equation. When you go to chemical engineering, they're still solving part second order partial differential equation, but they call it different things. When you go mechanical, it's no longer called volt, amps, and watts. It's called force, acceleration, okay, and all that stuff, right? And mass, but the equations are the same. So why was I able to tra trans trans uh, transform from a double E to clean tech? Because I didn't know anything about optics or solar, all that stuff. But I was able to learn because I had all the foundation. Right. So engineering is engineering. Engineering is just math and physics. Okay. So if you know that, then you can extrapolate to other areas. That's number one. Yeah. And the other thing is that what you know or what you learn is really depending on your interest. Like if I were retiring double E in semiconductors, I was not interested in clean technology and solar energy, I probably wouldn't learn about it. But guess what? When I did was interested, I dove in and said, no, there's nothing. It's just same math, same, same all the stuff, you know? So I find out it's all dependent where your own motivation is. If you're interested, you will learn. If you're not interested, you're not, not <laughs> okay. But the fundamentals is the same, okay. Yeah.
Like, uh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you what NVIDIA's products are. Yeah. NVIDIA is hardware. Yeah. Okay, that's like a TSMC manufacturer's chips, right? Yes. So everything that you need, a chip, you have to get it from TSMC because they are the only company that, besides Samsung, TSMC, and maybe a little bit Intel, they are the only companies that do the chips. But the end application is different. Okay, so right now, why is NVIDIA and AMD and so on so popular or Supermicro? Because everybody needs AI. And AI, the only companies that, pro, that have products that can make computation using the, the artificial neural networks is using the graphics chips, the GPUs. So, That's the reason. So is that like GPU chip, is it kind of like a sub Okay, I'll explain it very easily. Before in our PC, do you see a line that says Intel inside? Yeah. Because at that time of CPU, central processing unit. Okay, so every computer or PC has a central processing game stuff. Okay, gaming, the people that people play the electronic games, and they require a different kind of chip that's able to to do a better job in graphics. So it's called a GPU. Right. So NVIDIA was specializing in GPU. And, and, and they, by luck, is again, keep saying <laughs> that I'm just telling you the truth. When, when NVIDIA started with GPUs for games, they didn't know that they were going to have such a prominent position today in AI. After the fact, they said, oh, all the our chips, GPUs that are good in processing graphics, they're also good in processing artificial intelligence neural ANN, artificial neural networks. So they just lock out. So oh okay. great. Everything that I did, it was not, it was not like they were so brilliant as that 10 years ago they you know that, that, that all their so Okay, so let me let me try to explain it. <laughs> okay. You know that okay, you know you know why you have a PC, right? Okay. Why do you need a PC? Because the PC provides you compute power. Things that you don't know, you're not good in math, you submit the thing that tell you the answer. It has, this is the central processing unit. Okay. So the GPU is the same. If you want to use anything related to AI, you have to use a GPU. And who are the companies that are manufacturing GPU? Started with NVIDIA, right now maybe AMD will get into it, some prey, I don't know, or some other companies, or they all get into it. Because they say, oh, that's where the money is, okay? So I was talking about stock market. Oh, supermarket just go, goes over the roof. They will come down someday because when everybody says, "Oh, that's where the money is," everybody here jumps into that, and then you're going to suddenly see so many competitors. Okay, so whatever goes up, there's a law of physics; it never changes. Whatever goes up, it will come down. Okay, yeah. So, so media, not only they have this uh, hardware CPU, I know they also have a specific software. Now, the Correct. software is developed by themselves, so they also have numbers to use to write their software. You know. No, I, I don't know what language, but, but you are right. As I said at the beginning, right now, there's not a single technology. If you're even in the hardware business, you still need software. It doesn't, and if you're in software, you also need hardware. Yeah. So why did Microsoft and everybody who are open in AI, they are into software. But why are they buying all the chips from, from NVIDIA? Because they don't, they don't do chips. Right? Yeah. But do they need it? Yes, because if they don't have the NVIDIA A100, H100, all that stuff, they cannot compute all the uh, machine learning language algorithms. But I think they also use uh, Amiga's uh, software. Well, there, there's, there are many layers. Okay, yes. so there's hardware, there are the chips. The software, which is like Microsoft and Google, all they say, okay, all the machine learning algorithms, okay. And then there's another thing called infrastructure. So in order for you to go and utilize the 
chips from NVIDIA, no matter. You need to where put it, where, like just like when we were doing chip design, the chips go onto boards, right? And then the boards go into a system, right? So you need everything. It's not like you can say, okay, well, only, but right now people are specializing. So in our era, there's the chip companies and there are the board companies, correct? But in order to end into a product, into any system, while you're plugging in is the board. The board has hundreds of chips in there. I think that right now I'll tell you what is happening. Everybody starts from their strength. So NVIDIA started with the GPU chips, but then they realized that in order for them to make it to the next level, they also need to start selling the infrastructure, the boards, and also start selling software. So all of that jives together. Because you cannot do it only by standalone. Because imagine, if you do only the chips, and then you need open AI software, and you need some other company's infrastructure, it's very hard to coordinate. So it's easier to say, since I'm doing all the bulk of the work, which are the chips, I'm also going to provide the software that can access my chips, and I am going to provide the platform where to put the chips go in. Yeah, maybe that's the Hey, Mom, do you want to see where I can get into the chat? See where any questions from the yeah. online? Two of them, I think. Okay. I thought there was like a chat. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good night, right? We have chat here. Okay. Uh, it's not too much. We have two questions here. Yeah, that, that I don't know. Yeah. The first yeah, response. all of this is not related to the talk. It's so much more like chat GPT. Yeah. So, okay, so any questions, uh, comments, or philosophy, philosophical questions? So for, for undergraduate, yeah, uh, let me ask the, uh, the, the question. I said earlier, you talked about edge because the decision to make. Okay, the answer is both. One, one thing you're going to notice in all my answers, there's not a single unique answer. So right now, what's hot right now is called edge computing. But it doesn't mean that cloud computing is completely gone. Okay, so each has its own strengths. Cloud computing is good for very high performance speed. It's very fast because you have all the servers. You have the, all the NVIDIA chips and all the, the hardware in the, in the farms, okay, in the server farms, right? So anything that requires high speed and large storage, you still have to go to cloud. But if you want to go instant reaction, you have to go to edge. So it doesn't mean that if you're doing edge, you're not doing cloud. You still need both. But you have to pick and choose what's the area that you need the most and make that decision. It doesn't mean that if you use edge computer, you don't use cloud anymore. The edge, the, I'll tell you what the edge characteristic and their, their need. The edge device means that you need very fast latency, very fast turnaround. If you go and put in a question, they need the answer right away. So what happens when you have to send the information to the cloud? You send the information, oh, sorry, internet is down. So in the meantime, you already have access, right? So, so you have to tell what is your application, okay? Some of them require instantaneous response. So you have to use edge computing. Okay, some of them you can afford to wait, but you need a, a very much more powerful server farm. So you send it to the cloud. Yeah, so the answer is not just single answer. It depends on what you need, okay? Right, if you have a lot of data, you need a lot of storage space. You know, you have to archive all the stuff. You have to go to the cloud because a device is very small. You can only contain very small chip. You cannot have, you can respond very fast, but you cannot have handle large amounts of data. So it depends. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you again for coming.
Hopefully you you learn something from tonight's talk.